everyone. I am Rebecca from Chemnitz, and I'm here today with another video in our leftover dye series. In my dedicated dye pot, I started off with 16 cups of water, a third of a cup of table salt, and a third of a cup, which is about 80 milliliters, of this Ritt liquid dye in navy. Now, I have already dyed two child-sized t-shirts, 100 grams of yarn, and two other mini skeins of yarn with this amount of dye. And the bottle says that half of the bottle should be good to do one pound of fabric, which would be about two adult t-shirts. Well, if maybe two kids' t-shirts is equivalent to one adult, then maybe we've done about half a pound of fiber so far, a little over half a pound of fiber so far. So I wanted to see if we can use up the rest of this dye by dip dyeing some sock yarn into our dye pot. I pre-soaked and then wrung out 200 grams of Stroll fingering weight sock yarn. This is 75% superwash merino, 25% nylon. But Rebecca, you might say, this pot doesn't have any acid in it. That's right. So I am gonna add some right now. I am gonna add three tablespoons of white vinegar. Ah, let's go ahead and make it four. All right, I have just added four tablespoons of white vinegar to this dye pot. Now the table salt that is in the pot could affect the rate of the color absorption, but this is something that we won't really know what to expect until we see what happens. So let's get ready to start dip dyeing. Okay, part of the reason why I decided to use 200 grams of yarn for this today is that I have watched the remaining dye exhaust from dip dyeing in the past. So I am curious just how much there is. Um, but so far, I am not really seeing anything that's starting to look any lighter. Whew, that is still really, really, really opaque. But I'm slowly, slowly adding more and more. Oh, come on, die! <laughs> there's so much in here. I was like, I was sure that if I started going for 200 grams, then I might use it up. I mean, maybe it's getting paler. It's also getting quite heavy. I mean, it looks like the color towards this tip is get is a lot lighter. Aha! Okay, I see. It's starting to clear. It's starting to clear. I'm going to add the rest in now. Wahoo! And I am moving it around so that way we still might end up with some white on the tip, but uh, maybe it won't be so stark white. Actually, there's still... Come on, yarn. Get those tips to some of the dye. Wiggle it around. Okay. So we definitely have a gradient, and we have exhausted most of the dye. But with the heat on low, I am going to let this simmer for 10 minutes. And while that is going on, I want to tell you that I'm not planning on using the RIT Color Stay Dye Fixative on this yarn. And part of the reason behind that decision is that the Color Stay Fixative is really intended for when you're using the RIT dyes with cellulose-based fibers. And today in the pot, we have protein-based fibers with the wool and the nylon, which chemically has a structure very similar to protein, which is why you can dye it with acid dye techniques. But anyway, I will be back once the timer beeps. It has been 10 minutes and wow. Okay, so let's see. 
there is not very much color left in there. There's a tiny bit, but most of the color is in the now probably slightly tangled yarn. I'm gonna go ahead and turn off the heat in the pot and I am going to let this sit um, I'll turn it so that way you can see the lighter portion. I'm gonna let this sit, the yarn sit in the pot for another 10 minutes before I remove it. The 10 minutes are up. So let's remove, oh, this is heavy, the yarn from the pot. I'm letting as much rip down as I can, but, ooh, that's hot. <laughs> okay, the 200 grams is a lot harder to get into the flimsy pan, but, um, we have a really, really nice gray gradient here from extremely deep, deep saturated color all the way to it's almost, almost a gray. It's kind of cool. So I'm going to let this cool completely and then we will get ready to wash our yarn. Let's wash our pretty, pretty yarns. I am relatively confident that this will not require a ton of washing. Mainly, yeah, check that out. Mainly because we got the dye bath almost completely clear. Um, you can see I'm not even wearing gloves right now. I am so confident. Uh, <laughs> the nice one things tend to will run clear. I mean, there is a hint of color coming out, but again, there is a hint of color left behind. But. The majority of the color is in the yarn, which is exactly what we want to see. I, I just added some clear dish soap to help dislodge any, um, any residual dye. Sometimes adding a little soap helps uh, some more bleeding to happen. But someone more recently asked, she was like, oh, I forgot to add soap. Do I need to go back and rewash? And not necessarily. Not everyone chooses to wash their yarn with soap. Um, it's a personal preference of mine, but I also like to do it, and here I'll even add a little more, because I think that in the videos it helps to show just how color fast the, the dyes are. Sometimes when you do the wash step and add soap, you get a little more dye to come out, um, which is just handy to get it out. I'd rather have the dye come out now versus when I am dealing with a knit project. Um, and then be disappointed with the way that the, the color ends up. But, nevertheless, I am gonna keep washing this until the water runs clear, and then we'll hang up the yarn to dry. Here is the finished dried yarn. I really think that the problems that I've had with writ dyes when it comes to washing and everything else in the past has really been because I use way too much of the dye. I think that since the recommendations involve using half the bottle, I've been thinking that I need to add way too much, sort of like how in tie dye there's a lot of waste. But it turns out that with these writ dyes, there doesn't need to be waste and we can in fact clear the dye pot and get really, really deep saturated colors along the way. This is the first time that I've had salt in the dye pot while I have been dyeing wool. And honestly, I don't know if it had an effect in slowing the color absorption or not. Um, I would say that the dip dyeing went rather quickly overall, but we do have a gorgeous, even looking gradient. But again, I'm not sure if that has anything to do with the salt or the writ liquid dyes. People sometimes ask me about the maximum skeins of yarn that I could do in a single colorway. And I think with dip dyeing, the weight and the volume starts to become a problem. I think that two is around the limit that I could evenly do around the same time. I mean, these colorways are very, very, very similar and probably as close to identical as I could get. Um, but Conceivably, I could do up to four, but I think more than that, or even approaching four, the dye pot will start to get crowded and the colors just really won't be quite that even. I really need to be able to have that second hand to help add things to the pot. I am Rebecca from Chemnitz, and I think a video like this is an important reminder that 
there is really never any reason to just throw some dye away. You can create some really, really amazing colors with what is left over in your dye pot. If you liked this video, please subscribe to the Chemnitz Tutorials YouTube channel. I release at least two videos a week and do frequent live streams every month, and you really don't want to miss any of it. If you would like to support Chemnitz on a more personal level, check out the Chemnitz Patreon. You can find a link in the video description. Thank you so much for watching.